Hey everybody, so we have finally made it to object-oriented programming. An object, think of it as a collection of attributes and methods. Attributes are characteristics of an object. Methods are functions that an object can perform. Objects can be used to mimic real-world items. So look around you right now. Next to me I have a phone, a book, and a dog. Think of attributes as characteristics. What kinds of characteristics would a phone have? Maybe a version number, a charge, a service provider. Objects can also contain methods. What kinds of actions can a phone perform? They can make calls, receive calls, play games. Now with a book, some of the attributes of a book could be maybe an author, number of pages. Let's see, what kinds of methods can a book perform? Really not much. You can open a book and you can close it. So those are just a few. Okay, lastly, how about a dog object? Some of the attributes of a dog could be a name, an age, maybe a breed of dog. Then what kinds of actions can dogs perform? They can eat, they can bark, they can sleep, maybe play fetch. So I think you get the idea. An object is a collection of attributes and methods. Now to create an object, we can use a class. A class acts as a blueprint to create objects. Let's create a class to create human objects. I will type class human, curly braces. I'm going to add a public access modifier. We'll learn about access modifiers pretty soon. I would like these attributes and methods to be publicly accessible. Let's start with the attributes of humans. What kinds of characteristics can humans have? How about a name? This will be of the string data type. I'll declare this attribute, but not yet assign it. Maybe an occupation, like a job. Standard string occupation. Then maybe an age, int age. Our class human has these attributes. Humans have a name, an occupation, and an age. That's good enough for this example. Now let's cover methods. A method is a function that belongs to a class. It's something that an object can do, an action it can perform. What sorts of actions should our humans be able to perform? How about an eat method? Void eat. I'll just display a message, standard output. Uh, let's say this person is eating. Humans can drink. Void drink. Standard output. This person is drinking. Okay, one last example. How about sleep? Human sleep, right? Void sleep. Standard output. This person is sleeping. Good enough. Oh, then make sure we add a semicolon to the end of the class. Perfect. Okay, so we now have a human class. We can use this class as a blueprint to create human objects. Each human object will have a name, an occupation, and an age. They can also eat, drink, or sleep. They have their own functions, which we call methods. So to create a human object, we will type the name of the class, human, then a unique identifier. How about human1? That's creative. So human1 is an object. Human1 has a name, an occupation, and an age but we have not assigned these attributes. Let's say human one's name, human one, member access modifier, which is a dot, name equals Rick. Then human one's occupation equals scientist. Human one's age equals 70. Let's verify that this worked by printing out these attributes. Standard output human one dot name. I'll add a new line. Then let's repeat this for occupation and age. Human one dot occupation, human one dot age. Human one's name is Rick. His occupation is a scientist. His age is 70 years old. So this part is kind of similar to structs. 
However, objects can also perform actions. They have methods. Rick can eat, drink, and sleep. So to invoke those methods, I would type the name of my object, human1, and let's have human1 eat. So human1.eat, add a set of parentheses to invoke this method. Okay, this person is eating. Let's also test drink and sleep. Human1.drink, human1.sleep. Okay, this person is eating, this person is drinking, this person is sleeping. And that is our human, human1. For more practice, let's create a second human. Human, human2. I'm going to copy these lines. Let's change human1 to human2. Human2's name will be Morty. Occupation will be student. Age, what about 15? I'm going to display the attributes of human2 this time. Then I'll have human2 invoke its methods. Eat, drink, then sleep. Okay, human2's name is Morty. Their occupation is a student. Morty is 15 years old. Then Morty can perform these actions. Eat, drink, and sleep. Now you can assign some default attributes. So let's say that all humans we create will be named Rick. It's kind of like we're cloning him. His occupation will be scientist. Age will be 70. I'm not going to assign these attributes. What I did is that I added some default attributes. So we have human1 and human2. I'll display the attributes of human1 first, then human2. Human1.name, occupation, age. Then we have human2's attributes as well. So remember, I am not assigning these attributes within the main function. We have two humans, they're both named Rick, they're both scientists, and they're both age 70. Okay, now here's one last example to really get the hang of objects. Let's create a different class this time. How about cars? Class, car. Let's add a public axis modifier. Then what kinds of attributes would cars have? Perhaps a make, standard string make, a model, standard string model, a year, that would be an int. Then maybe a color, standard string color. You can add some default attributes, but I'll just leave those empty for now. You can add some methods. What kinds of actions can cars take? I guess you can accelerate. Void accelerate. Standard output. Uh, what can we print? You step on the gas. Then maybe break. Void break. Standard output. You step on the brakes. Then be sure to add a semicolon to the end of your class because I always forget to do that. Okay, we now have a car class. It acts as a blueprint to create car objects. To create an object, we would type the name of the class, car in this example, then a unique identifier for the object. Let's say car1. Then we can assign some of the attributes of this car object. Car one dot make maybe Ford. Car one dot model equals Mustang. I like Mustangs. Car one dot year equals twenty twenty three. Then a color. Car one dot color maybe silver. Okay, then just to test these, let's print these attributes. Standard output, car one dot make. I'll add a new line. Let's copy this line, paste it three times. Then we'll display the model, year, then color. Okay, our car object is a Ford Mustang. The year is 2023, the color is silver. Not only does our car have attributes, but it has methods, actions it can perform as well. Our car can accelerate and it can brake. Let's test that. 
car one dot accelerate car one dot brake. Okay, you step on the gas, you step on the brakes. Then if I need a second car object, I can type car, car two, then I can assign the attributes and I have access to its methods. So yeah, that's an object, everybody. It's a collection of attributes and methods. Attributes are characteristics of an object. Methods are functions that an object can perform. So yeah, those are objects, everybody. In the next video, we're going to cover constructors. Your assignment is to post a class in the comment section down below. So yeah, that's an introduction to object-oriented programming in C++.